Okay, so today we're going to start the 500 amp BMS, the Dally BMS build with these uh, Calb cells. Uh, these will do uh, pulses of about 1000 amps. I don't know what voltage, but anyways, I'm going to see if this will start my vehicle. And if it does, that's going to be the BMS that goes with it. And hopefully it lasts and it doesn't die. We're going to shrink wrap this. Then we're going to shrink wrap this again with that inside of it. And then we'll shrink wrap it one more time. I got little heat pads that I'll be putting on here to keep this warm in the winter and a little thermal uh, controlled unit to keep it warm. There's seven watts each pad. Uh, I think I'm, well, I might only put one on the bottom or maybe I'll put two, one on each side. And then uh, the th thermal controlled switch will control uh, when those turn on and off. They should be able to stay on non-stop for a few days before the battery goes dead. So even if they ran 24-7, as long as I drive it every other day, it should start. But we'll be uh, testing that out. So I have three of these in total. 13-inch heat pads. Uh, 7 watts of heat this will output. And I got three, so I can do a total of 21 watts. I don't think we'll be needing that because I will be covering this with three layers of shrink wrap which will provide a tiny bit of insulation with air gaps. I might even put some a little bit of thin insulation around it on top of the three layers. But uh, we'll see. Just because I want to keep them warm obviously. But I'm not sure if I want to put this on the underside or on the sides. I'm thinking I'm going to go for the lower side because heat travels up. And uh, I'm going to go from there. All right, so I'm just testing the temperature controller with the temperature uh, probe here. If I warm it up with my hand, the red is the temperature probe. It's warming up. The output shuts off. Now if I put the ice cube back on it, oh, I warmed it up way too much. So the heat pack's turned off. Now we're dropping temperature with the ice cube. This is just backup on top of the, the BMS cutting uh, the charge to the battery. So we're dropping. So we got to go two, uh, two degrees lower than set point. So the set point's in blue. So once we hit uh, plus five, it will go into heating mode. This is all in Celsius. This should turn on any second now. There we go. And there we go. We got heat on the battery. I'll leave this, this here for a bit. So I want to see if I can feel any warmth coming off these. And then we'll tidy up. We'll hook up the BMS and we'll start wrapping this thing. Alright. So I'm done the battery. And it's ugly as can be. But that's okay because it's for me. I will not be selling this. I ran out of capped on tape, I ran out of a bunch of stuff, and I'm also not that good at shrink wrapping, especially because this shrink wrap was actually a bit too big, and I really had to shrink it to get it to fit, like it barely got small enough, so it kind of looks super, super mediocre. I got, I'm siliconing, I got um, five minute uh, epoxy underneath, but I think the epoxy is actually going to separate because this can flex. So I decided to put some silicone around the outside to match the color. And then this actually sits in there for my battery level. I was thinking I was going to install this and completely replace my lead acid battery, which I still might do. If I do, I have to waterproof around here. Here's the, the screen there. That is the temperature. But I, I kind of want to cover this. I want, I want My plan was to cover this all in Kapton tape so you can at least see through and see the temperature and whatever. But I'm thinking I'm just going to put this in the back of my vehicle and run two cables, up, or actually one cable, positive all the way to the battery, and then just tie the side to ground uh, with a fuse or a breaker, like this one, 175 amp or more, and then have this as a, as a battery assist. This will keep the lead acid battery really good for a long period of time because this likes to sit at a higher voltage than the lead acid battery. So it likes to sit around like 13.5 volts or something like that, 13.2. That'll keep the lead acid battery good longer. It'll assist in starting. And then I'm also going to have a 12 volt battery in the back that runs directly off this. 
and then my battery on the front of the Jeep, I'm also going to have like a quick disconnect, so I can use just this, I can use, uh, um, I can start the vehicle with just the battery in the Jeep, or I can use this as a jump start. Uh, yeah, I've done this before, this is nothing new, but last time I did this, I did it with uh, all lead acid batteries, I had three extra batteries in the trunk, three 100 amp hours, I had an extra 300 amp hours in the trunk, but I had a 3000 watt inverter and a solar panel on the roof, and I actually used that to power my house trailer uh, for a while, my old house trailer. Anyways, nothing special here, the BMS is behind here, yes, the BMS has a fan, I completely covered the fan for now, because I'm not sure if I want to use this outside or not, if it's outside, it's never get hot enough to actually turn on, and even if it does turn on, the fan can still spin, and it can still circulate air, like this is the pocket, it can still circulate air, but it will get hot eventually, but I'm only going to be using this for quick starting of a vehicle, and, and maybe a 3000 watt inverter, which will not even get this close to 500 amps, so this should never even turn on this fan, so... That's my theory anyways, we'll see, at least there's a, a temperature sensor where I can see the temperature inside, I can see it on the BMS, on the app, and yeah, this uh, super crude, I literally threw this together in like, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, this should have taken more like, I don't know, half a day, but I threw it together really quickly, because I just wanted something as a backup for my vehicle, I have uh, only diesels, and they draw so much power to start in the winter time that uh, they really should be a dual battery setup, but uh, they're single, so sometimes they have a hard time starting. And I believe this is going to really make it make a crank real fast. Well, it's quite cold in here. Let's say it's around minus 10, and the heater is on on this battery. It's uh, reading f 5 Celsius. The app is showing about 3 Celsius in the battery, so this is right close to freezing. Um, both temperature sensors are at the top here, and the heaters are on the bottom on each side. So I do believe the batteries are above freezing. And we are holding. See how this does. So this is minus 10. It's going to go down to minus 20 tonight, and I'm going to test this in minus 20 conditions. Check it out. It's warmed it up almost one degree Celsius since it turned on. So I think it will get up the temp and should itself turn itself on and off, on and off. But, uh, yeah, we are still at full charge. So I think this is going to work out just fine. And just like that, it's gone back up to temperature like it's supposed to. And it has stopped heating. And it's only getting colder and colder in this garage. Now, it's not a very nice looking battery, I know. But, uh, what I really care about is if it works, it's not going to be like everybody's going to be looking at it all the time. It's actually going to be hidden. That's awesome. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to put it back on charge. Now, I made one mistake. And I'm not sure if this is a mistake, good or not. I'm just, I have to watch it. Is this, right here, the... 14 watts of heating, this is running directly off the battery, and this is not running through the BMS. So if the BMS shuts off, this will continue to warm the battery. So this requires, uh, every, I'd say every two days, requires full, um, I have to really be careful and watch it to make sure it doesn't go down to zero. I don't think this will operate down to zero. I'll have to look at it, its operating voltages. 